you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Stephanie and I'm here with Mr. Skin and we have joining us today, Kate Kennedy. Kate, how are you? I'm good. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. And for those of you um, who are, are new to this or new to Kate, um, Kate is a comedian who's also featured on OnlyFans. She hosts a show called Cam Girl Chronicles. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that's like? Yeah, so it's a really cool show. Um, we just wrapped up the first season. Basically, I interview cam girls from all over the world about their jobs and what their lives are like. And it's a funny, safe, mostly safe for work um, comedy <laughs> podcast. But it also, I think, goes a long way towards breaking down like some of the stigma, especially that we as Americans have about like international cam girls. Um, even being a sex worker myself, when we first started doing the show, I was like, oh, they're from like Eastern Europe or like South America like are they okay and like I'm like embarrassed to say that I still had that kind of like stigma and they're obviously wonderful they're super super funny such sweet girls I like want to go to Romania and hang out with all of them now um, you know, it's been a great experience yeah Kate I was I was telling Stephanie before we came on that so I've been going to AVN since like it's well since like 2000 and um, every year I was at AVN and every year it was about the porn stars and there'd be these guys, these long lines uh, for the guys to get autographs and meet, meet the girls. And then uh, like, now I haven't been there in a year and a half because of COVID, but in the last couple of years, I started to notice that it was less about the porn stars and it was the cam girls mm -hmm. that were the celebrities at AVN. And it blew my mind that these girls would have lines around the thing and it was kind of cool. And I remember telling people this camming thing is for real. Trust me, I see it with the fans at AVN. And it's, it's, and if you think about it, would you rather make money doing it from your apartment uh, or have to go to a shoot and deal with all that craziness? So I, I get it. And uh, I've seen it evolve. It's pretty, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, I actually think MFC is the majority owner in AVN now. Um, yeah. which is partially why they're so prolific there. Um, and it is, it's, it's interesting because I come at it from the professional porn stance of it. Like I was a professional porn star for about three years. So I come in from the studio aspect. So I personally would so much rather go to someone else's house and like fuck a hot guy and then come home to my own home and like not because these cam girls work fucking hard. Like yeah. I tell all of them, I'm like, you like, it, they're different kinds of jobs, right? They have different risk profiles, different skill sets, but like these cam girls will be online for like eight hours a day. I can't focus on anything for eight hours a day. Like wow. I mean, it's a little bit like, I guess it's freelancing as opposed to, you it, know, having like a salaried eight hours a day job or whatever. Well, especially with the promo, because so much of like your success in sex work mm -hmm. these days depends on like who you know and who's promoting you like the podcasts you do the shoots that you do like a big part of why I got so many followers on social media is because I was doing professional porn like Naughty America has half a million Twitter followers and they were tweeting about me so I got their followers so for these cam girls to really have to build up their brand from nothing to having a, a really like rabid following in many cases like I admire the fuck out of that these girls are like SEO champs, they're fucking branding machines. Like they know their job. I'm honestly, like I, yeah, I look at them and I'm like, you guys could do. If I was in the position of starting my own business, I would hire cam girls. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, no matter what it was, I would be like, you guys. They're the entrepreneurs of the internet for sure. Do you find that other cam girls have uh, already have a background in porn, or do you find that you're talking to a lot of people that are trying it for the first time? Uh, I would say 90% of them do not have a background in professional porn. The actual wow, professional porn, high. the professional porn world is very, very small. I mean, I would say that at a given time in, I mean, LA and Miami are the two kind of big hubs in the U S and I would say at any given time, there's less than maybe 200 performers working regularly. So yeah. you really like when I was in, I knew everybody, <laughs> there's just not that many people. I mean, we go bowling together. We had a bowling league and a karaoke yeah. night. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you guys have fun. It's important to cut back, cut loose, relax. <laughs> but that that is so interesting when you're when you're connecting with these uh, cam girls abroad, especially. Um, are you finding that they're they're going through an, a similar experience as American cam girls here? Is it the same? Is it an? Is just just the same industry no matter what? 
No, actually, I would say that overseas, they have far more progressive attitudes towards Mm -hmm. sex work, especially online. So like when I talk to these girls in Romania, um, they work in the studios. So they go to a studio and I've like looked these places up. They have websites. Um, They're all in Romanian, but you can look them up. These places look like a Las Vegas casino. I mean, it looks like you're at the Aria or the Bellagio. They're gorgeous spaces. They have commissaries with like snacks. They have on-site hair and makeup people, nail people. They have all of the AV equipment. They have translators. They have people that set up all the lights. So they're basically on a soundstage in this beautifully designed bedroom set and they go into work, they do their shift and then they go home. And like, you can't have that in America. It would be a brothel. Like, <laughs> the, you know, legally you cannot do that. Like people have tried to do it. I think there is one in um, Nevada, but you can't have, and I've said that for years, but like, oh my God, I would be so much more willing to do this if I could go someplace, have it all set up, not feel like it's my own home that I'm like show, you know, like, cause there's yeah. a boundary there, especially for me. And so like, like if I could just go to work like a normal person, mm-hmm. I would be so much more motivated to do that. And they're like, oh, yeah, we just and also the overhead because then they're just like they do pay per hour, I believe, to use these spaces. But if you're a brand new cam girl, I mean, the amount of and I talk about this all the time, the amount of equipment and money that you have to sink into having a good webcam, having all the toys, having all the outfits, having the setup that builds up really quickly. Yeah. So for these girls to be able to go in and be paying, I like, I think it's like 20 to 30 US dollars an hour to use this space and have everything right there. Not to mention people that are actively like coaching them, helping them with their social media and how to interact in their room. Like, oh my God, no wonder America is being outpaced by all of these other girls. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense. That truly is its own, its own industry. Uh, They have it together. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, they really do. I'm like, I'm dying. We're really hoping if we get to season three of the show, uh, we really want them to let us go over there and actually get to do these in person and, and see these faces and meet the girls. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be yeah. amazing. Now, I know that you, and you mentioned it a second ago too, but you you do also do stand-up comedy. Um, what is do you, what is it like for you? Um, I imagine you probably talk about your your sex work and your comedy, right? Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, do you, what is the reaction from audiences when you do that? Um, I mean, it's kind of, I try, especially lately. So I've been doing stand up for two years, basically like full time at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing it for a while and uh, I try not to lean on it because it is kind of an easy crutch because people are fascinated by it. Right. Like I, all I have to do is say gangbang and everyone's laughing, even if the joke's not that good. And so like people love it. They're really interested in it. Um, I think I'm a good person to be able to joke about it because I really don't look like a porn star when I get up there. <laughs> like I'm, I'm very small and I'm cute and I'm, I'm not very dressy. So like I really do kind of just look like uh, the girl next door. I'm sorry, my computer blanked out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, they they love it. Honestly, I, I've been in a rut trying to write more jokes about not porn stuff lately <laughs> it's hard. You get yourself yeah it's really hard I'm like I know I can just be like hey guys you want to hear about the time I fisted my butthole and everyone will laugh <laughs> <So>. <laughs> at least you have a trick you can pull out when you're bombing you know you're trying your dating is weird material and then you're like this isn't working let's pivot um <laughs> speaking of pivoting obviously at Mr. Skin uh we we focus on uh, movie nudity, celebrity nudity. Um, we wanted to ask you if you had a scene in a movie, a sex scene that you particularly love. Yes, I did. I emailed uh, Deanna about it, but do you guys know it already? Or I do know what your answer is, and it surprised no, me that I did rewatch the scene. I don't think Skin knows, though. No, let's hear it. Uh, my favorite sex scene in a movie is the factory sex scene in 8 Mile between Eminem and Brittany Murphy. It's also the first oh. thing I ever like masturbated to. Like as was, I, I saw that and then I was thinking like when this movie came out, you know, and I'm like, for sure, this was a sexual awakening scene. Oh yeah, <laughs> thousand percent. I still think that scene is so hot. Like rest in peace, Brittany Murphy, but holy shit, yes. that's so it's hot. It's like two minutes of Eminem sucking her face. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, I rewatched it and I uh, kind of forgot how, um, I guess how attractive Brittany Murphy really was. I was like, oh, yeah. I know she's supposed to look grimy and everything, but I'm like, oh, she was so beautiful. <laughs> 
Well, it's also too, it's looking at it from a nudity standpoint, there really isn't nudity, you know, to, mm -hmm. it, it's really more the sexuality of it. It's, yeah, so it's that is true. It doesn't always have to be a lot of nudity to be a great sex scene. Yeah. There's a lot of the chemistry of it. Cause he's kind of like grabbing her and like throwing her against like, there's just that like, Oh, it's like really raw. And I personally find that so hot. Mm -hmm. Like, as someone who's seen a ton of porn, a lot of naked people, and like me, I mean, I'm in his like factory workout any day. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's I, I like that it's it's long too, because it gives you a lot to look at, to imagine. You know, like like Skin said, you don't see a ton of skin, but it, you can kind of let your imagination run away with you after right. you watch that. Yeah. Yeah, you um, know what that sex was like, and it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very passionate scene. <laughs> And I guess along those same lines, do you have any uh, celebrity crushes? Oh, man. Celebrity crushes. It's weird now because, like, occasionally I run into these people around town. And so now I have to be like, um, you know, like, did I say something nice about you? <laughs> like, Hi, Bradley Cooper. How is TJ Maxx treating you today? I saw Bradley Cooper at TJ Maxx one time. It's weird. Wait, did you uh, really? I did. Yeah. I mean, Hollywood's so funny because you just run into people like all the time. Um, I guess I'm just surprised that he's at TJ Maxx, but I'm also very happy <laughs> to hear he's a Maxinisto. Right. It's very weird. Like you, th they're never like where you expect them to be. And I'm like very bad at recognizing people. So someone has to like elbow me and be like, that's Bradley Cooper. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh man. Current celebrity crushes. Okay, great now. Um, I am blanking. I'm totally blanking right now. That's okay. I put you on the spot I'll keep thinking one. about it. I might come back to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I half expected you to just say Eminem because we were just talking <laughs> about Eminem it. is a long standing one, honestly. Like, yes, <laughs> Eminem is a long And I can't run into him because he lives in Detroit. So, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> TJ Maxx, shout out to Detroit. Um, what, uh, what projects are you uh, working on coming up that you could talk to us about? <sighs> oh, my God. So many, so many. Um, I'm in like a very weird spot right now because things are starting to reopen. So I'm getting back to doing stand up, but I'm also trying to use this last, I'm trying to squeeze every last second out of this like pandemic lockdown while I'm still at home <laughs> and have an excuse to not like be going out and doing stuff. Um, I, so I'm also co hosting uh, the other podcast, Two Girls, One Mic. Um, which is really fun. We interview, that's a long running podcast. I've guested on it several times and then they needed a new co-host. So I jumped in and I'm taking on some more stuff um, as far as their social media and branding and, and the way we do a show. So that's a very fun show. Uh, you can find it at TGOM pod um, or two girls, one mic anywhere. And we interview porn stars, scholars, academics, comedians, um, all about porn. And it's just a very fun conversational show. So that takes up a lot of my time. Uh, I'm currently pitching another new podcast to the network that currently produces Cam Girl. Uh, hopefully we will start up on the second season of Cam Girl next month or in June. And where can um, people find Cam Girl? You can find it at camgirlpod.com. Um, and yeah. there's links to anywhere you listen to podcasts on the website. It's for some reason, uh, like Apple Podcasts and stuff doesn't like it when you search Cam Girl. It gets confusing. Oh. But if you go to camgirlpod.com, right on the very front page is the links to Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, anywhere, you know, that you uh, that you listen to those. Um, I'm currently where I do OnlyFans. So that takes up a lot of my time. And I'm really trying to I've been a little lazy in shooting content lately. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how do you feel a pressure to uh, do content a lot on OnlyFans? I mean, the platform rewards, it's kind of like TikTok, the platform rewards constant content, um, which can be hard. So, I mean, I have a backlog that I can work off of. Like I've aggregated every nude I've taken since I was basically 22. Wow. Uh, so I have a file of all of those. So, and every scene nudes. I shot. If anyone is looking for career advice. <laughs> keep your nudes, get a, get a hard drive, back them up. Um, I have mine like right up there uh, because you want them in the future. Um, and all of the scenes that I shot with people while I was, performing like content scenes so I still have a ton of content um but I really am trying to I feel like I actually wrote a joke about this I feel like committing to regular social media features is just like growing up instead of shit posting all the time I, I <laughs> um, agree with you yeah <laughs> I'm really trying to commit to doing like okay I'm going to do this on Mondays or this little video um I'm also working on some writing so I'm hopefully going to be launching a Patreon pretty soon um because I also write uh, I'm working oh, what on what kind of things are you do you write is it related 
Yeah. So, I mean, I write a lot about my experiences. It's a lot of kind of creative nonfiction. Um, I'm also working on a pilot right now. Um, eventually, I really want to get into TV writing mm. is kind of my goal, end goal with like comedy, podcast, everything. I really like to work in a writer's room. So I'm working on a pilot right now. I'm also um, just starting to work on a feature script. Um, oh my God, you are doing everything. I'm really <laughs> trying to do everything. You are an entrepreneur in the making. Look at her. <laughs> um, well, it's great living here because I have so many like really talented, successful friends that do okay. this as a living. And it's so wonderful for me. Like I very much grew up in a background that was not show business. It was nothing like this. Mm-hmm. And where I couldn't even say like, oh, I want to be a TV writer. I want to be a comedian like that. I would have gotten laughed at. Did so, you have a, a different goal in mind when you were growing up of who you wanted to be when you grew up? Yeah, oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> I mean, like, I think I secretly knew I, I wanted to be a comedian. Like, I wanted to perform. I loved speaking. I've always loved public speaking since I was little, little bitty. I, mm-hmm. I was like the kid in Catholic school that would like raise my hand to do the readings at church every week. Like yeah. I wanted, to, I, was, I was dying to like be on the microphone. Um, but I mean, I went to school, uh, I went to undergrad for advertising um, and strategic like brand management, digital brand there management. You go. That's why you're so good at branding yourself. I don't know. It if really that, is helpful. We can, I mean, we can plug your uh, Twitter and Instagram at the end of this here, or, you know, we'll come to an end soon, but it is like, I was looking through your Twitter earlier and I was like, wow, she's her own business. This is, uh, it's inspiring. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. Cause I honestly, um, I always feel like I could be doing so much better. Um, I do have, that's another thing I really want to write is that, uh, when you get into this kind of work, like specifically online sex work, I guess there's really no one that tells you how to do this job. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can't major in this, <laughs> you know? So like, uh, yeah. and there's, there's so many aspects of what I learned in school that I use constantly. Like I make a content calendar every month of, Hey, what holidays are coming up? What might be trending? Like, Oh, it's the Oscars or, Oh, it's May day or Easter or whatever. So that you know that you have this like themed content to put out. Um, so stuff like that. So I really want to write some articles for new girls or new performers about that. Um, but yeah, so I, I had no idea. I mean, I, I wanted to go to art school. My parents were like, absolutely not. So I went into advertising because that seemed kind of creative. And then I hated advertising. Um, I worked at like an after I hated it. Uh, I also studied art history. That didn't go anywhere. Um, I have a degree in art history with focus in architectural history. Not <laughs> super mean, lucrative. You're making art. It's making art. You're, sure. It's tangentially related. It's mostly writing. I mean, I want to eventually, you know, be a TV writer. I'd like to write a book. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, I, that's really where I think I want to like focus in, but it's so fun. Cause yeah. you really do get to try all of these things. And like I said, I'm just constantly surrounded by these really brilliant people that are my friends mm-hmm. and that want to help me. And that are like, yeah, let's sit down and I'll show you how to write this or I'll show you how to do this. And that's, I, that's something I just love about living in Hollywood and LA is that you're just always surrounded by all of these people doing all these different things. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. It sounds like you're also doing so much and you're in a great position. I mean, I, I already felt like you were a, a good get for this. And now I'm like, I think she's going to go places. Um, <laughs> so Kate, um, where can people find you on social media or where would you like to direct them if they are hungry for your content right now? So you can find me on Twitter at the OG Kennedy. Uh, that's the is in the OG is an original gangster Kennedy, like the dead president. Um, and if you go there, the link that's in my bio is my link tree, which has links to absolutely everything. Yeah. I, I just try to focus people there because it's so much faster than spelling. Mm-hmm. out. I'm the OG Kennedy pretty much anywhere, but that's where you can find the links to my only fans, to my Instagram, my YouTube, my personal website, um, which I'm trying to get more writing up on right now. And and redo. Um, so yeah, you can find anything there. You could find me on Instagram at the PG Kennedy, like the movie rating, because it's Instagram. So it's PG. PG, yeah. PG yeah. rating. She's so clean on there. Um, thank you so much, Kate. We really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, and thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next yeah, time. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Thank you.